Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here with designer Lisbeth Boss. Hi. And you are showing off a few of your creations here. Yep. I should say as well, Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. Yes. <laughs> There's a little Dutch I know. All my Dutch actually comes from uh, watching Over to Roya. Over, over to Roya? Over to Roya. Okay. Yes. There's okay. not useful Dutch at all. <laughs> I'm glad we're having this interview. <laughs> That's right. So, Lisbeth uh, has a few games here to show from Haba, and I was, thought you could talk about the design process for the games themselves, but also how you developed the game line. Okay. Because, I didn't show this initially. So, initially... Oh, you got that! Cool! Yes. Um, Lisbeth designed this game, Sleepy Princess and the right. Pea, right. part of Haba's standard yellow line. Right. And it was just an independent game. It was an independent game, and they decided to do the anniversary. They do that with games that sell really well, so I was lucky there. Yes. And they decided to do an anniversary and wanted to have it in a new packaging with a new color. Um, and in between that, when this was still selling, mm -hmm. I thought, how about making a card game for that? Because Haba was doing that with their, you know, good selling lines. So I made a card game, and then when Haba planned to do this, they said, actually, we'd like to have a third game, which is my first game's line game. That's right, which is very popular, it seems, for them now. They have a lot of games yeah, yeah. aimed at that, with they Animal Upon Animal. And yeah, they have that since, since a few years already. But yes. yeah, to have that in the, in the range of games, that's kind of cool. So they came out with this um, turquoise line in uh, Essen. Okay. 2016. So, for those not familiar, maybe you can talk about how this plays, how it originated. Obviously, it's based on the it, oh, on the, the story of the yeah, princess and the pea. Yeah. Well, it originated actually by me being a game designer and thinking, what could I do for Haba? What can Haba do that <laughs> nobody else can do? Okay. And Haba has fabric and wood. So right. then I thought, what can I do with fabric? And I made this. I made actually my prototype is exactly like this one. I okay. couldn't find it for them to bring over. Um, so I make mattresses and covers and pillows and stuff. And I showed it to Haba and they were like, we're going to take that. They were, okay. They were so the game, for those who don't know, is a very basic game. You're rolling very the die, you're moving the princess around, and right. ideally you are being able yeah. to put... Yeah, it has, it has two... This is a cooperative version where we try to stack the mattresses and the pillows. So you roll the die, either she lands on a bed and then you have to stack something, or you land on a washing machine, and then you have to remove something. Again. That's right. If and it, if it topples over, we collectively lose. I should mention as well. Is, did you put the pee under here? Yeah, I put the pee in there. Sorry. Yeah, it wobbles because, of course, there's a pee. Yeah. That's right. So things topple over. If you topple things over, you have to take back. Oh well, yeah. yeah. And if if we manage to get every get rid of everything, then we win. That's right. And um, that's it. The competitive version is on the other side where everybody gets his own set and has to try to get rid of his own set. And here you have to actually put on what it says here. So now you have to add a pillow and you can add anything or a cover. And here I can give it back to whoever I want to. Okay. And straightforward. Straight forward. play here. A little yeah. fun balancing elements. Yeah. So how did the, the evolution of the design happen? when you were coming up with the card game? Um, that was a hard one. That was a hard one. Because I wanted to have the same theme, mm -hmm. but the mattresses were so extremely cute. <laughs> and how do you translate that to cards? Because cards are like... And nothing. Nothing. Yes, two-dimensional. Yeah, so how, how am I going to do that? So this is my prototype. Yeah. Should we move it over here? Yeah, move this over here. This is the prototype I made for that. And I thought, what if I make a bed that's, that's lovely and have um, the box also be the packaging? Okay. So this, this was the box. And I also wanted it to be the packaging, so I put a P in there. And so the actual production version, yes, you use the standard tin box that you have here with a magnet yeah, that's, on the bottom. That's really cool that they came up with that. Yes, yeah. and so this balances and wobbles as you're placing yeah. things and, on and there. And I think this is a really neat thing that they did here. They put the pee underneath in the mattress and stuck in there. So this is the first card. Okay. And as you're you're playing cards, I know you do the, the, the yeah. actual gameplay here. Yeah, well, you, you place a card on there uh, as the first card, then you put the princess on the crown. Everybody gets five cards. 
and it has to get rid of those cars. So if you do that, get rid of your cars, then you win the game. What you have to do is you either match pillows by pillows or color by color. So in this case, I could add a pillow. But if I add the pillow, I have to cover up the P. If I've done that, I'm going to move the princess again to the crown because she always stands in the crown. Try. That's not. Why do you place that? What? That's not the right color. And it's not no. the right object. You have to not match. No, you do. You have to match. Was I reading the rules wrong? I messed yeah. up the rules on the, the ages really? four and up game. Yeah, I had it yes. At home for a week. Yes. <laughs> I played it as really? well. Well, probably you can play it both ways. Mm. But you can play both ways, I'm sure. Yeah. It works out the same way. Yeah. Kind of mess up other people. But actually, I mean, it worked really well with adults, too, yeah. on here, just because it's sort of the standard Hobbit thing yeah. where it's the, the gameplay works and it has this nice physical element that, yeah. that's good for, for whoever. Yeah, and you, you can make it harder. It, it, that's, uh, it says that in rules. I'm not sure if you read that. Oh. <laughs> you can make it harder by not covering up the P, and then, you know, the card spread out more and it makes it harder. That's right. We were doing that anyway. We were taking the card and, like, Oh, okay. Slap ring it on the edge here. Okay. Yeah. And, All right. And if it falls, take it, bounce the card, and if not, you win. Okay. And so, how did the this come about? This is another challenge. And that was you another would talk challenge. About yeah. Designing games for children in general, because you've done this a bit. Yeah. And so, yeah. what are the, the principles that you're looking for when you're well, problems, designing games for kids? The problems with designing for kids, it, sound, it looks really easy and it plays really easy, but you have to be able to explain it in like two minutes. Okay. Uh, it has to be language independent. Okay. And you try to stay away from the classics because there are so many memo variations. This actually does have a memo variation in it because right. it's hard to avoid, but you have to try and do something, something new. But limit yourself in time and in, um, okay. in complexity also um, you need to have some sort of footprint on the table okay. if it's if it's just cards it's, it's kids are not attracted to it so if it's something three-dimensional uh, better invest in like a few cute pieces or one cool piece instead of in, like tons of tiles right well, we were emailing a little bit about this yeah, back and true. forth, and you said uh, an important part of it, of course, is time. Uh, the playing time, but also not being a stickler for actually playing the game. Right, I mean, right. You know, when it comes down to, like, right, like you being the parent playing it. Right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Like, with the Sleepy Princess, uh, my kids always treated that as a game, never played it as a game at all, ever. Okay. <laughs> so what, what kids do is they, they, they see this, they see the setup, and they, they know what to do. They, they start playing with it, put the princess in the bed, you know, and she goes to sleep, and whatever, and she wakes up again and does stuff, whatever. Right. So that's what they do. It's like a role-playing thing for them. And if you teach them the rules, and they don't stick to it, let it be. It's, it's, okay. You ease them into liking playing games. But you're making this kind of role-playing element or, or, or storytelling yeah. storytelling tools almost as well yeah. Yeah. for this. Yeah. That also, that seemed to be more what this was about was um, sort of a tool for the parent to be with a child. And, yeah, th and this was it because this was a 2 plus game. It yes. should be a 2 plus game. So I was thinking what do kids do when they're 2 years old? Mm -hmm. And you, you know, you, have a, you had a rough day with them because they're really because they're two. Because they're two. Yeah. And um, you put them to bed eventually and you think, okay, now it's my time. I'm going to go downstairs and make coffee. And as soon as you get into the kitchen to make coffee, the child is there. It's like, I just put you to bed. Yeah, you know, I'm hungry or you didn't read me a story or I can't find my teddy bear, whatever. So you keep bringing them back up and say, okay, it's enough now. Yeah, but I need water. <laughs> So every every parent understands this, every child understands this, and the way Haba uh, is also bringing this and it was also meant to be is like um, it's like a, a good night instead of a good night story, you just sort of play this as a good night game to right. you know, sort of little tradition to get the kid to go to bed. Okay. All right. Um, any other words of advice about designing for children's games or? Um, I think. 
less is more. Well, it looks like a lot here on the table, but well, we have three, this is three games. Three games with the prototypes for two of them. That, that's so, that too. Yes. But less is more. Really, if you if you write rules, go through them again and think what can what can you lose. Okay. And uh, have some elements that are really gamey, like uh, the tiles, or have a die or something. That's that's what kids feel that that it's a real game. It makes them feel that it's a real game. Right. Okay. All right. Well, thanks very much for the overview yeah. on here. It's a nice line now officially with, yes, your own line. My own line. Your own game line. It's very right there. Woo. All right. <laughs> so thank you very much. Yeah. Good. Thank you, too. Danke Oh, I can't say that. Danke